Yes, people, we have created another tactic. It's another one. Another one. Yes, and it's a 4-3-3, sort of. We are using a Stragulus. So, similar to Pep Guardiola, many of us would remember the 4-3-3 that Pep Guardiola used to use with Lionel Messi up top as the false nine. At the time, some were calling it Stragulus, or that's kind of when the false nine evolved. But today, we do have a Stragulus. There's no striker, but it doesn't affect us we still score a lot of goals we play some really really handsome football and we're going to break it down so the journey started off in Spain given that Pep Guardiola is Spanish I thought we might as well just start this in Spain so the first test Cordoba there's about three tests the first test Cordoba we played 37 games we won 35 we drew five losing one we are using a special role the player that is playing in that special role he scored 33 goals remember we have no striker average rating he also has the highest average rating we do have the player with the highest assist in the league and the man of the match as well it's the guy playing in that special role let's look at some of the stats now we're going to look at average possession because that's important given this is possession based and we are in fifth place with 58 percent this could be better and it's going to be a lot better in our next test the best pass completion we're in fifth place as well but now looking at the dribbles made it's called Doba. the fewer shots against called Doba. most shots for most goals and that is going to be a common theme but now let's fly over to france and let's see how the tactic did in france so just like the test in spain we are not starting off in the elite leagues in fact none of these tests were in the elite leagues with an elite team so it kind of it's kind of to prove that it can work sort of or kind of anywhere so for red star this is the best results for me anyway we played 34 we won 29 we drew one losing four i know we only lost one last time but it don't matter again if we do look at the media prediction we are predicted to finish fifth cordoba predicted to finish fourth i believe now looking at the goals uh the player played in a special role isn't there but looking at the average rating we've got two players in the top three for the assist we've got two players in the top three again and the clean sheet is our goalkeeper but most impressively look at the team stats we completely completely dominated the game or the save and i would say there's a little bit of a difference between the first test and the second test because i made one tweak and one tweak sort of changed a lot sort of so we scored the most goals we had the most shots for the fewest shots against the best pass completion this time and the most possession 63 percent who did it better me or pep guardiola well we'll ask that question again later on today looking at the most clean sheets we come in second place and for the fewest conceded we are in second place Given that we are a possession based side, we can look at some of the stats quickly for the Red Star. Looking at the possession, we infrequently lost the ball. We were really, really good on the ball. Looking at the movements, we completed a lot of dribbles and we were frequently fouled as well. So actually, if we had a set piece routine set up, we could have taken advantage of that as well. Looking at the pitch tilt, we had fewest, well, we had the fewest final passes against us, the final third passes, and we also had the most final third passes four looking at the passing a lot of passes a lot of it passing dynamics again fewer passes allowed against and we had a lot of passes completed so things are looking really nice and look at that pass map as well it is absolutely gorgeous well it's gorgeous when you see the tactic because then it makes a lot more sense now let's let's quickly look over to our last test so this test is far from complete again we're now in portugal not in the top league but we've played five and we've won five so far tarzan tarzan has the highest average rating and he's also scored the most goals again he's playing in that special role in the first game we beat real 1-0 away from home 58 percent of the ball in that game we beat Oliveira do hospital 3-0 at home 55 percent of the ball in that game we beat alverca but we didn't see most of the ball in that game surprisingly then we beat i cannot pronounce that team's name we had 62 percent of the ball a very decent team actually and we had 65 percent of the ball actually we can look at the ball share as well and for the ball share you will see 68 percent and then lastly we left off here against benfica b team c team d team i'm not exactly sure we won that game 4-0 and then we left it off uh we left it off yeah at fontinas and we will play that game at the end of the video but now we're going to look at the tactic and have a look why it's so special so here is not 
the tactic, but we're just going to quickly create it. We're going to quickly create it. So it's a 4 3 3, but it is strikers. For the left back, we're going to have a fullback on support. We're playing out from the back, so he's going to support the play. And then on the right hand side, we're going to have a fullback on attack. Now, if you watched my last video, we'd understand why we're using fullbacks and not wingbacks because we're trying to play out from the back. And I feel the fullbacks are better in possession and they are less aggressive than a wingback. A wingback likes to get further forward. In goal, surprisingly, we're going to leave the goalkeeper. Um, This might be my new thing. I'm going to stop using sweeper keepers. I'm going to to have i'm going to give the traditional goalkeepers a goal at the back we're going to have two ball playing defenders they're going to be dribbling more but once we see the full and completed version then we will look at some of the player instructions for the anchor man well i've just spelled it there for the <laughs> for the pivot player we are using an anchor man in central midfield we have two mazalas on support the two mazalas are very very important now they're important because they help create some wide overloads and triangles we play some really really nice football out wide that's kind of the the main aim and how we break teams down using this tactic create the width and then what also happens is these mazalas now can run in this sort of channels which again i'm sure we will see a little later now on the flanks we are using two inside forwards because between them sandwiched we do have the special role and that special role is the trek quad T-Star, he's going to be the, he's the main player in this, uh, this tactic. When we lose the ball, when we have the ball, we're always looking for him. So when we lose the ball and then the moments we win the ball, we're looking for him as the outlet and he's positioned in a very dangerous place. But not only is in a very dangerous place, he has runners off him. He's got a lot of options, which allows him to play make. He's got two Mazalas running off him. He's got two inside forwards running off him as well. So he's got a lot of options to create. Now for the mentality, we were using positive mentality for the passing directness. We left it on shorter and we were playing out from the back given that we are stretching the pitch i felt it was a very very handy instruction to use underlaps so just think of it your wingers are holding the strip holding the stretch stretching the pitch holding their width and then you have fullbacks on mazanas making those underlapping runs very very dangerous so to create that width we also have the attacking width out wide and then lastly we are going to work the ball into the box so now it's time for transition and this is where I think I'm doing it better than Pep if I say so myself. So when possession has been lost, we are going to counter press. Now when possession has been won, we're going to be a little bit more direct than Pep Guardiola typically would be. And it's kind of with mixing both things up. We've got direct play. So we've got a lot of dribbles. As you saw in the test, we completed the, the, the most dribbles all the time. But also we're also holding a lot of the possession. So we're mixing up the two. We've got good possession and we've got good direct play. When possession has been won, counter movements help us with that direct play because now they're going to be looking that first pass is going to be forward so that's what we're going to do in transition we're going to distribute the ball to the center backs and take short kicks as well now lastly out of possession we are going to operate with a high press for the trigger press we're going to break our shape all the time we're going to try and win that ball back all the time <laughs> because it helps possession based sides when you, if you want to be a possession based size if you want to take control and be on the ball you need to have the ball so you have to work really really hard off the ball in order to be on the ball <laughs> that is mostly how i created this beast now from scratch i of course didn't start with this from scratch i believe i had a defensive midfielder on support i was using an inverted wing back on the fen even some of the instructions so i actually went using underlaps i was using overlaps before but this is where watching games really, really helps. And you just got to watch your team. You got to study your team. I do this in about the first five games. I just study my team. I watch every goal kick to see how we're building out. I watch how we're building out from the back. Then I watch the middle third play. And then I watch the final third. And then that allows me to make my tweaks. So the reason why I tweaked to an anchor man, he recycled the possession a lot better. But he also done better in protecting the two centre backs. That was kind of the idea to have uh, the inverted wing back on defence so we can build up with the three at the back, which didn't really happened at the time because the fullback he's not that aggressive to get further forward so we still always had the four at the back so i had, i just took advantage of that and used a fullback on support and then used that anchor man and we were building up better and we also had better protection in front of our defensive line as well we didn't always start with the mazala on the right hand side we had a carrilero of course with a fullback attack and i felt we could just do well in covering space here but the mazala does that well anyway he does that really well and i 
in my head, I thought the Mazzala, he's going to be fairly high when we're trying to build up and play in the middle third. But actually, he does very, very well in supporting the play. So this is the final tactic for the player um, instructions. The two inside forwards would have sit more narrow and tackle harder. The Trecotista has nothing. The two Mazzalas has ease off tackles. Now their job is to cut the passing lanes and force the opponent out into those wider areas. We do have an anchor man as well, but he has no added instructions. The fullback, the left back, stay wider. The right back, stay wider. The two centre backs, dribble more and stay wider, helping us with the um, build up play. And that there is this doing it better than Pep Guardiola tactic all wrapped up. It's finished. It's complete. Now, what we are going to do is play a game for the end of this video. And that is how we're going to see how this tactic really, really can play out. So, Cal, uh, who who are we? What's our, what's this team's name? Caldas. That's who we are. I knew that anyway. I knew that. So it's Caldas versus Fontinas, and it's going to be a good game. And it's live. So here we are. The tactic is all prepped now. When you are, or if you want to use this tactic, the players that you, that your best player should be the Trequatista. Let's get that right. Let's get that out of the way. You want to have good centre back. You want to have good players, and you want to have. You can literally just look at the attributes for the player roles, and this could this should tell you a little bit of what you should be looking for. But the player and um, the team instruction, sorry, it also tells you. So the passing directness. We want possession based. So you want good possession attributes, things like passing technique, balance, and first touch as well. Composure. You're looking for that sort of stuff there. Work the ball into the box. Again, decision making, off the ball movement, teamwork for your attackers is going to be important. But getting pressing, so everyone in your team should have decent stamina, work rate, teamwork, aggression as well will help. So that's the sort of players that you will need. Now let's get stuck into this game against Fontinas. So the game has kicked off and we have a corner inside the first 43 seconds. We rip it in, but they head it out. Oh, it's just Thomas. Thomas has a shot. Louise, have a shot. So he's passed it back to Clemente. So here's a free kick. It's Pere with a free kick, but it hits the wall. And the goalkeeper should be claiming that easily as he does. Here is Fontinas with a throw in. Medeiros plays it out wide to Fretash. Here's Samir on the ball now. Plays it to Guga. Moniz. Here is a build up here from Fontinas. Here's Ron inside the box and... What a save from the goalkeeper. Caldas under a bit of trouble. Ito now with a deep-ish throw-in. And here comes Fontinas building up from the back once again. Patient as he plays it to Google. Has Ito. We've got to press more now. Here's Ron, the right or the left winger even. Ito. So this is very, very patient from the opposition. Hopefully we can win that ball. Yes, we do. Here comes Caldas now on the ball. Here's Thomas. The centre back bringing the ball forward as he does. Plays it out wide to Luis Farina. He's going to drive towards his fullback. He loses out, but he regains the ball again. Leandro, the anchorman, plays it to Juanio. I don't know what the hell was that header about. He tried to header from a ridiculous angle. And to be fair to him, he hit the side netting. I'm not angry. I am not angry. Here's Rodolfo. Rodolfo. I'm definitely butchering some of these names. 100% butchering some of these names, but here they are playing out from the back. They're playing out from the back and they're keeping possession well, but they can't actually find a pass to progress up the pitch unless they kick it long and they do, but they've won the second ball and there's Amaro. He's breaking through the defensive line. He's broken through and the ball has gone over the bar and that is a let off for Caldas. They've got to defend a little better than that. Here's Fontinas now with a corner. Motti, young Motti is about to whip this in and we've headed the ball out and Pierre just... Continues to head the ball out. Here's the right back. He's beating his man. He's whipped the ball in and it's hit. Oh, wait. Is it hit the bars? The keeper tipped it. I have absolutely no idea what has happened there. But here comes Fontinas again attempting to play out from the back. Here's Maderos. Now they've worked this one nicely. They've worked this one a lot better, but they've run into trouble. Here's Clemente now, the left back. He plays it into pair. He's got to play. Oh, what a pass. He's from. Oh, what a goal from Bruno Janario. What a goal. What a pass from Pierre. Take a bow, son. Take a bow. It's now Caldas 1, Fontinas 0. Fontinas have actually seen more of the ball so far. Here's Clemente with the ball. He plays it into Pierre and there's trouble instantly. The defenders have pushed up and it's allowed Janario to sneak in and get the ball into their post. The keeper should be doing a little bit better there, but never mind. Never mind, it's Caldas 1, Fontinas 0. He's just on ref. He is just on. What a finish. What a guy. 
Oh, look, it looks like the trouble. The momentum has swung now to Caldas. Here's Thomas, the centre-back. Andre Salsa, Leandro. He plays it out wide to Luis Farina. He runs wide. Andre Samoas, he runs into the channel. And what a save by Rodufo. And there it is. That's what we was looking for. One of the wingers to go wide and, and allowing that underlapping run. And it causes trouble because we're always going to outnumber the defensive line. Sometimes we can have six attacking players against one defensive line. And that's always going to outnumber them. And it, it causes trouble. He could have done better, but it's a decent save, to be fair, to the goalkeeper. And here is the right back now. There's definitely been a little momentum swift now. Here's the right back, plays it into Thomas. Fontinas just can't deal with Caldas at the moment. Andre Salsa. What a ball again. He's played out wide. This inverted or inside forward is he's dangerous on the left hand side. He is dangerous. That was a good opportunity. We worked that one well, but we just didn't create a very good scoring opportunity. And here comes Caldas once again. Now they're winning the second balls. Here's Luis Farina out wide on the left hand side again. He's made that exact same run. Here's Rodriguez. He's thrown goal and it's 2 0. It's that man again. It's no, it's not him again. It's offside. And that is why you always wait for the VAR call. You always wait. But look how eager we are. We've got four players against three there trying to get in behind. So eager, unlucky. And wait, it's another highlight before half time. Here's the left back, Clemente, into Angeli. Conje to Leandro. Leandro out wide to Clement on the left hand side now. He's going to put the ball into the box, but it's a good block by the defender. Um, that cannot be the highlight, surely not. It's Andre, he's about to whip in this corner. Oh, it's a header just over by Luis Farina. And that wraps up half time. So Fatinas actually started the game uh, decent. They started the game decently well. Decently well. Does that, does that even make sense? The XG's on 0 0.3. But as you can see, Caldas kind of took over the game. And they now have 12 shots and three on target with a decent and respectable XG for half time. Passes completed. We completed 91% of our passes. Though they have more of the possession, I mean, we are completing our passes. Looking at the bull share as well, the actual bull share, how much we're seeing of the ball, it is in favor to Caldas 57%. So not to worry, not to worry. Let's go. The game has died. Oh. As I was just saying, the game has died down a bit. We've got a highlight. Luis Farina working hard to get the ball. Here's Leandro now, the anchor man, the holding midfielder, Andre Salsa, bringing the ball out, dribbling more. Here's Pierre now. Plays it out wide to the overlapping fullback this time. He plays it down the line to, to Joanna, the goal scorer. What's he going to do here? Do a little bit of magic. Here's the right back. Oh! Joanna Oliveira has made it two goals to the nil for Caldas. What a goal. What a goal. Again, lovely. It's worked well. It is worked well down the right hand side. Gennario pulls it back to his supporting player and he just smashes it inside net. It's 2 nil now to Caldas. Now we are looking a lot more comfortable. And yeah, Fontinas had their chance, the opportunity to score their two half chances, but they didn't take it. And now they're getting punished. Here is Pierre now with a corner kick. The highlight has started with a corner. So this could spell danger. Here's Leandro, Pierre now, back post, there's a bit, oh, good save by the goalkeeper, it's a good shot actually, but there was a player at the back post waiting for a tap in. Both teams seem to be patient with their passing, just playing it at the back, waiting for opportunities to open up. Here's Clemente, the game has got to end, oh no, Decore, he's lost the ball to Decore, Decore's on the break here, plays it back to Motte. Shots blocked. Has Ragnar now. Shots blocked. That's just going to be shooting for the sake of it now. And yeah, that wraps up the game. It's Caldas 2. Fontinas 0. It's a professional performance from Caldas. Not the best, but a professional one. And you can see with the, mo the match momentum as well. It, yeah, it's in favour for us. But unfortunately, that wraps up today's video. If you have enjoyed that, don't forget. You can hit subscribe. You can hit like. And also leave a comment in the comment section as well. Shout out to my Patreons. And I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. Beep.